mind and breath then being interdependent you must learn how to breathe properly if you want to calm your mind and rid yourself of your worries and frustrations in everyday life when you are at peace your breath is slow and even so if you reverse the process and learn to breathe slowly and deeply your mind will follow suit you cannot be worried and upset if you are breathing in a calm and controlled manner nor can you be calm if your breath is coming in hurried jerks so first things first so first things first i want you to try the yoga complete breath which employs the lower middle and upper lung it is sometimes divided into three diaphragmatic intercostal and clavicular breathing but in its correct form the yoga complete breath should employ all three sections in one fluid intake of breath beginners should take things very easily at first lie down flat on the floor no pillows and place your hands lightly over your diaphragm Remember to wear nothing tight around your waist or chest and women should always loosen the bra before doing any yoga breathing exercise. The complete breath. Slowly exhale as completely as you can. Very slowly inhale through the mouth drawing in the air evenly and without sudden jerks. With your hands placed lightly over your diaphragm you will find that this is the first area to expand. As your inhalation progresses you will feel a very slight retraction of your lower abdomen. As you complete your inhalation you will feel your shoulders rise slightly as your upper lung becomes fully expanded. Slowly exhale through the mouth using slight force. Contract the abdomen as you complete your exhalation to expel as much air as possible. Lie quietly for a few minutes after you have taken your first complete breath. Do not attempt to sit up for a while or you may experience a slight dizziness or faintness due to hyperventilation caused by a sudden excessive and unaccustomed intake of oxygen. If you do have such a reaction it only proves how badly your poor lungs needed that extra oxygen but do not worry the dizzy feeling will soon pass. Go carefully at first with this exercise and soon you will be able to perform it with no unpleasant side effects. When you reach the stage you can perform the exercise sitting up straight with your head level and your hands in your lap or even standing erect with your hands at your sides. Always of course practice yoga breathing exercises before an open window and if at all possible in the open air. For the first few days do not take more than 2 yoga complete breaths a day but gradually increase the number ad lib up to 60 full breaths a day. This should be a slow process and you should allow yourself quite some time before attempting the full quota of 60 a day. Be content at first to take just a few at a time. When performing the complete breath I want you to be conscious of the slow filling up of your lungs from the abdomen to the shoulders and the ensuing slow exhalation should produce a feeling of calmness and relaxation in your body and in your mind. Never hurry this exercise. It is far better to take two slow correct complete breaths than to take 10 hurried ones. In yoga exercises it is always quality and not quantity that counts. Tense people will particularly benefit from this exercise if they perform it just before bedtime as it promotes healthy natural and refreshing sleep. When you are able to perform it correctly do try to practice it whenever you can during the day but particularly when you feel tired, depressed or upset. You can even take a few deep breaths as you take that morning walk up to the bus stop or the train in which case you can match your breathing to your footsteps say breathe in for 6 and exhale for 6 If you are lucky enough to be anywhere near the sea draw in that wonderful sweet smelling air for all you are worth It is said that some people are tense by nature not true they are tense by sheer bad habit and these so called natural tension merchants unconsciously allow all kinds of lurking tensions to accumulate until hey presto a beautiful full blown peptic ulcer a chronic heart condition or worse the breaking up of tension is going to be for most people the breaking of the habit of a lifetime i have been told in all seriousness many times but miss richmond i must build up tension while i am working otherwise dot Otherwise what? Otherwise I would add you would have so much more energy that you wouldn't t know what to do with it so you feel you must squander a little by becoming tense. Let us consider this problem in its proper perspective. No one repeat no one ever got the best out of themselves by means of tension. You may think you need it that you could not do without it nevertheless you wonder sometimes why you are unable to sleep and that your nerves are often worn to shreds and you suffer from nameless fears. Can you imagine what it would be like to be free forever of these distressing symptoms to feel relaxed and cheerful and full of energy 
I can show you the way through yoga, but there is a price. You will have to part with those precious tensions of yours. My intention in this book is to show you the way to better health through yoga and not to moralize in any way, but may I tell you just one story which I hope might stick in your mind for the rest of your life. It is aimed particularly at those readers who feel they cannot live without a burden of tension on their shoulders. There was once a wise old man who was sitting at the window of his house when he saw, down in the street below, a poor beggar carrying a heavy load on his back. What is that you carry? called the old man. The beggar looked up at the window and then opened up the large sack he was carrying. It contained bundles of old newspapers, empty bottles, bits of wood, empty tins, broken bricks and all kinds of useless matter. But it is nothing but a lot of rubbish, protested the old man, tell me, why do you burden yourself with it? To which the beggar replied, I must, it is all I have. And now to the second round in this battle against those tensions of yours. In the previous chapter I discussed physical relaxation, yawning and stretching, and if you have been practicing the exercises I described they will have gone a long way towards the breaking up of tension. Let us now go a step farther. Your next task is to learn how to develop and control your respiration. In yoga breathing the following five principles are involved. The habitual use of the full power of the lungs. Retention of the breath. Cleansing of the lungs and bronchial passages. Breathing and slow stretching. Alternate breathing or breathing through one nostril at a time. This is known as sun and moon breathing. In this book I will cover all five principles of yoga breathing and in this chapter I will deal with one, two and five. Firstly, then practice the yoga complete breath as often as you can and always remember that the depth and quality of your breathing is far more important than the number of breaths you take. It is a good idea to start your pranayama or breathing exercises by taking a few full breaths to cleanse your lungs and prepare yourself for the other breathing exercises, all of which are basically variations of the complete breath. Practice the complete breath in any position you prefer, either lying down, sitting on the floor with your spine straight, sitting on a hard chair with your hands in your lap, or standing up straight. Retention of the breath. This should not be attempted until you are able to perform the complete breath at least half a dozen times in succession without experiencing any unpleasant dizziness or fainting. Then proceed as follows. When you have completed your inhalation hold your breath for an instant before you start to exhale. One second is enough at first, but gradually extend this period of retention until you can hold your breath for several seconds without discomfort and without employing any force. Please do not try to force your lungs to do things which you know they would rather not. Remember that correct yoga breathing is based on the body's natural impulses. At the end of every exhalation there is a natural pause with the lungs completely empty. At first you must obey this natural impulse and breathe in when you feel the need to, but gradually extend this pause for a second longer, and then yet another second, but do not force the pace. This gradual extension of the pause will make the ensuing inhalation that much more full and deep. Practice retention of the breath until you can perform it to your satisfaction but I repeat SLOW is the word for yoga breathing, slow and rhythmic. The word hurry has no place whatever in this book. Alternate breathing. I would like you now to try alternate breathing or, as it is also called, sun and moon breathing. To explain this strange name before you begin, the two aspects of prana or life force which surrounds us are personified as pingala, the positive pole and ida, the negative pole. One of the aims of yoga is to balance their opposite currents in the body, which then produces a state of perfect spiritual and mental equilibrium. The breath that enters the right nostril or pingala is called the sun breath and that which enters the ida or left nostril is the moon breath. The alternate breath consists of deep controlled breathing through each nostril in turn. Sit down either cross-legged on the floor or on a hard chair with your spine erect but not stiff and your head level. Close your eyes and proceed as follows. Close your left nostril with your left thumb and breathe in slowly and deeply through the right nostril. Hold the breath for two seconds. Close the right nostril with the last two fingers of your left hand and exhale very slowly through the left nostril. A natural pause will follow and when the impulse to inhale appears do so, this time through the left nostril, the right still being held closed. Hold the breath for two seconds. Exhale slowly through the right nostril with the left held closed. This completes one round. 
Beginners to pranayama should limit themselves to two rounds at first, but do add one round each week until you are performing six rounds a day. Ideally, this exercise should be performed facing different points of the compass according to the time of day, following the path of the sun. Thus, in the early morning you should perform it facing east, at midday facing the meridian, at sunset facing the west, and at night facing the north. Sun and moon breathing should be preceded and followed by three or four complete breaths to create the right atmosphere of peace and tranquility throughout the mind and the body. Though one have concentrated on the physical aspect of yoga in this book, as I said in the beginning, it is impossible to divorce the body from the mind and all yoga exercises, breathing or otherwise, must always affect all th Though one have concentrated on the physical aspect of yoga in this book, as I said in the beginning, it is impossible to divorce the body from the mind and all yoga exercises, breathing or otherwise, must always affect all parts of the organism, both physical, mental and spiritual. When you have been practicing sun and moon breathing for a few days and have established some sort of rhythm and balance in your performance, proceed to the next stage, which is the regulation of the length of your exhalations to twice that of your inhalations. Thus if you inhale to a count of 4, then you exhale to a count of 8. I use 4 only as an example for the length of your inhalation must always depend on your individual capacity and comfort. 1. Reiterate the warning about undue strain. Please, no straining in this or any other yoga exercise. It can only do harm and achieve nothing. After a few days of the above controlled breathing your next step is to prolong very gradually the retention of the breath until it equals the length of your inhalation. Thus if you inhale on a count of 4 then hold your breath for 4 and then exhale on a count of 8. Again you must adjust this counting to suit your own capacity. This is the simplest form of sun and moon breathing and will suffice for our purposes in this chapter which deals with the calming of the mind and nerves. The advanced forms of this exercise call for almost superhuman discipline and are practiced in connection with the awakening of a mysterious force in the body known as Kundalini, the serpent power. This may briefly be described as the divine power of knowledge and wisdom from which, through civilization, man has become separated. But the Kundalini, said to lie coiled at the base of the spine, is not dead but dormant, which is why every man is potentially divine no matter how far he may have strayed from the divine path. But to return to your frayed nerves and wavered emotions, I will end this chapter with two simple exercises, one which combines breathing and movement and one which calms the mind and quenches thirst. The first of these is called the L-Balance Stretch because while performing it your body roughly resembles the letter L stand up straight, feet together and hands at your sides. Inhale deeply and at the same time raise your arms above your head, lace your fingers together and turn them palms upwards. Remain stretching upwards with your arms while you complete your inhalation. Hold your breath for an instant and then, while exhaling slowly bend your knees until your calves are touching the backs of your thighs. Remain thus until you have completed your inhalation, with your arms still stretched above your head. A natural pause will follow the completion of your inhalation, during which you should rise into the standing position and lower your hands to your sides. When you can perform this exercise try a slightly more difficult version which requires you to hold the breath throughout the movement thus. Stand erect. Stand erect, inhale deeply while raising your hands above your head with the fingers laced as before. When you have completed your inhalation hold your breath and bend your knees as before with your arms above your head. Remain in this position for as long as you comfortably can without exhaling. When the impulse to exhale appears do so, at the same time rising to your feet. Repeat up to 6 times according to the time at your disposal. This exercise taxes your sense of balance but it is a good exercise in calming the mind for it requires a considerable degree of concentration and muscular control to keep from overbalancing in this discipline in conjunction with the deep slow breathing and the retention of the breath results in a calm mind and soothed nerves. In conclusion here is a simple exercise which imitates the respiration of the serpent. It is called Sitali and it helps to calm the mind, purify the blood, quench thirst and cool the body when it is overheated. Protrude your tongue from your lips and fold it together to form a tube. Draw in the air through this tube with a slight hissing sound until you have completely filled your lungs. Hold your breath for as long as you can and then exhale through the nostrils. SITALI should be practiced up to 20 times a day. 
Combined with the other breathing exercises in this chapter the result will be a calmer, happier, more peaceful you. Chapter 4 Insomnia, Neurasthenia and Fatigue In the previous chapter 1 discussed emotional stress ailments. In this one we are considering the physical results of stress worry and constant fatigue. Perhaps the most common complaint of this modern age together with constipation which is discussed in the following chapter is insomnia. It is the cause of more widespread misery than one could possibly imagine. There are many ways to combat insomnia but many people, far too many, rely on harmful and habit-forming sleeping drugs which may induce an unnatural sleep but which do not, and cannot, cure the trouble at the source. Indeed many people who have relied on them for years find that they are wholly unable to get a night's sleep without them. Yes, insomnia is one of the scourges of our time but yoga has a way with it, nature's gentle and safe way. The yoga cure for insomnia and its dangerous resulting nervous exhaustion is the natural one based on toning and relaxing the nerves, taking in more oxygen, and remaining immobile with the body inverted. But first things first, what about the bed on which you sleep? Do you put up with just anything? Is it just a wooden frame, a mattress, and some pillows, sheets and blankets, or is it a supremely comfortable haven to which you can retire in blissful ease at the end of the day? No, I am not being fanciful. That bed on which you sleep may have more to do with your insomnia than you suspect. So let us consider it for a moment. Have you sometimes suspected that your mattress was too soft and often wake up in the morning in a deep hollow with your mattress making water wings on either side of you? It is time, I fear, to think about replacing it with a firmer one. Expensive, perhaps, but after all you spend just about a third of your life in bed and if the third is plagued with insomnia due to an over soft or worn out mattress is it not wise to consider spending a few dollars in order to improve your health, your spirits and your general well-being? Cheap at the price I would say. And what about those mounds of binky pillows? Do these offenders grace your bed too? Send those packing with that soft mattress. It is essential in sleep that your spine should be held as naturally as possible. If you are lying in the hollow of a feather mattress with your head propped up on a mound of pillows, your poor spine is held in a highly unnatural position so if you do succeed in getting to sleep, which is often unlikely, you will be sure to wake up with morning backache, a stiff neck, a feeling of not having slept at all, and possibly a headache to add to the general confusion. If you suffer from any form of persistent backache, one of the finest remedies I know, without doing another thing, is to buy a hard mattress. After you get used to sleeping on it, you would never look a feather mattress in the face again. Sleep with as few pillows as possible, one small, firmly packed one is adequate for most people's needs. Why make your poor neck work hard while you are sleeping? What did it do to deserve that kind of punishment? Next, your clothing. It would seem unnecessary to mention this, but I am certain that far too many people wear too much clothing when they go to bed. Jumpers, cardigans, bed jackets and socks are piled on over pajamas and nighties, and heads are tied up in all kinds of scarves. But why? In winter why not one warm, cozy nightie or a pair of pajamas, high necked and long sleeved, and in summer a wisp of nylon is all you need. Let your body be R-A-A-T-H-A while you sleep. If you are cold add more blankets but do not please choke yourself to death. It is often said that for most people the best sleep is before midnight. I do not necessarily agree with this and would gladly trade 4 hours of really deep natural sleep for 8 hours of tossing, fitful dozing which for many people passes for sleep. You can easily work out for yourself how many hours of sleep you need in order to work at your maximum efficiency the next day. And do not make the common mistake of imagining you need more sleep than you actually do. 8 hours is what most people take to mean a good night as sleep but many people need only 5 or 6, others need 9 or 10. So make sure that you are not one of the former, as you may be getting your 5 or 6 hours of good sleep that you need and tossing about for the other 2 or 3 thinking that you suffer from insomnia. Do watch yourself carefully before you decide whether you need a cure for insomnia at all. I find it restful to keep a book on my bedside table. No thrillers or ghost stories please. We are dealing with insomnia in this chapter and we cannot have you afraid to go to sleep being convinced that someone, or worst still something has come to, get you. There is some controversy about plants and flowers being left in bedrooms overnight. 
My advice is to remove them if you can. For the carbon dioxide they give off at night will not help you one bit in this battle against your insomnia. Do sleep in a well ventilated room with at least one window open and if possible the door as well. A stuffy overheated bedroom causes more headaches and insomnia than can be estimated. Finally, place your bed so that you sleep with your head to the north and your feet to the south or if this is absolutely impossible, sleep with your head to the south and your feet to the north. What you must avoid, you see, is sleeping across instead of parallel to the magnetic force lines of the earth. If again you accuse me of being fanciful, I can only tell you that I have known many people who have cured their insomnia and its resulting stress ailments simply by altering the position of their bed so that they lie parallel to the magnetic force lines of the earth. If you are skeptical and you are a chronic insomniac, why not try it? You may be agreeably surprised. Having disposed of the questions of how, when and where you sleep, what you wear and what you lie on, I will now show you some yoga exercises which will help you if you make careful note of all I have just said. Yoga will help you if you meet it halfway. Unlike some of the chapters in this book in which I have described yoga asana or postures which require patient practice, all the exercises in this chapter are very simple to do, with the possible exception of the S H O U L D E R S T A N D or Sa Vangasana. This may be a little difficult for my older readers so let us try this one first. Sit down on the floor with your spine straight and your legs stretched before you ankles together. Roll backwards until your head touches the floor and your legs swing over your head. Supporting your back with your two hands on either side of your spine. Raise your legs to the vertical so that your toes are pointing towards the ceiling and your body is resting on the back of your head, the nape of your neck and your shoulders. Press your chin against your chest in the chin lock. I have demonstrated the S H O U L D E R S T A N D in figure 6. Keep your body as straight as you can and hold yourself as still as possible. Resist the tendency to move your legs about in the air or to let your body sag at the waist. Close your eyes and breathe as deeply as you can. In the shoulder stand breathing cannot be too deep but it should be as regular as your restricted lungs allow. At first maintain the S H O U L D E R S T A N D for only a few seconds but as you gradually become used to this inverted posture it can be held comfortably for several minutes. I suggest that you hold it for as long as you have the time but no more than 10 to 15 minutes. The main advantage of this valuable basic yoga pose is that by holding the body inverted in poised stillness even for a few minutes the thyroid glands are affected and so produce a powerful effect on the entire organism. Also the blood flows to the head by its own weight instead of it having to be pumped upwards by the heart so it not only gives the heart a respite from its ceaseless work but it also brings a flood of rich blood to the brain and so counteracts nervous fatigue, exhaustion and other results of insomnia. But the benefits of the S H O U L D E R S T A N D do not end there. Because it strengthens and tones the lower organs it is especially recommended for women after childbirth and those who suffer from menstrual pains. A word of warning, if you suffer from any disorder of the How to be healthy with yoga Thyroid gland or chronic sinusitis or nasal catar do not attempt to perform the shoulder stand. The adventurous among you might like to try a more advanced form of this posture, known as the shoulder balance. In this the body is held as in the shoulder stand but the support of the arms is removed. The arms are placed alongside the body and you are then balancing on your shoulders, neck and the back of your head and the extra effort you have to employ to maintain the body in this position with no support from your hands and arms generally intensifies the effect of the posture. You will not be able to hold the shoulder balance as candle straight as the shoulder stand but do the best you can and above all hold yourself still. Keep your eyes closed and your chin locked against your chest. Another variation of the S H O U L D E R S T A N D, slightly more difficult but less tricky than the shoulder balance is to keep the arms and hands on the floor either pointing the same way as your head or else extended at shoulder level, while the body is inverted. Again the extra effort required to keep the body straight and still without supporting the back intensifies the benefits of the posture. One of the chief beneficial effects of the S H O U L D E R S T A N D lies in the reversal of the influence of gravity on the internal organs. Few people appreciate how great this influence is. The body fluids tend to flow downwards and the skeleton is also subjected to constant downward displacement and likewise the internal organs. 
People with jobs that entail long hours of standing are most subject to varicose veins in the legs and prolapse of the viscera. In hospitals, patients suffering from these and allied ailments are placed on tilted beds so that the legs are higher than the feet. This practice, a modification of the yoga asana I have just described, is to check the downward drag of gravity. Nervous fatigue is due not only to emotional stress but also to the fact that the muscles of your back have to work long and hard just to hold you up. By inverting your body there is an immediate relief from the strain and the overtired feeling dissolves into a pleasant feeling of relaxation. The shoulder stand therefore is an invaluable exercise not only for insomnia but for nervous fatigue and tired or swollen legs. As a prolonged shoulder stand and, for some of my older readers, even a brief one produces something of a strain and tension in the neck, the following exercise known as Setu Bandhasana or the bridge posture will bring relief by relaxing the neck and at the same time exercising the muscles of the lower, middle and upper back. It is fairly simple if you go carefully. The bridge posture. From the shoulder stand and keeping your knees straight, very slowly lower your legs until your feet are flat on the floor. Do not lower your body from the waist upwards and keep your hands supporting the back in the most comfortable position which is usually on either side of the spine. Performed correctly this exercise makes the body look like a graceful bridge. Hold it for as long as you comfortably can and then slowly, very slowly, lower your body and then your hands until you are lying flat. Remain relaxed for a few minutes and take a few deep recovery breaths. The shoulder stand should always be followed by the bridge posture. Although the shoulder stand is one of the easier yoga asana, I am aware that many of my readers will be either too ill or too stiff, or maybe even too overweight to perform this posture at all. In that case you will obtain many, though not all, of the benefits of the shoulder stand by lying down on the floor in your bedroom with your feet up on the bed. Practice the relaxation exercise, Savasana, described in chapter 2, with your feet above your head. Hold your body still and relaxed and try to calm your mind and clear away your mental and physical tensions. In cases of fatigue and insomnia you will find this practice of enormous help. And now here is a very easy little rocking exercise which will also help people suffering from insomnia. It can be performed as a preliminary exercise to the shoulder stand as I will explain presently or else as an exercise just before you get into bed at night to help you sleep. Rocking exercises Sit down on the floor, draw up your knees and place your fingers behind your knees as in figure 7. Keep your head up and your back straight. Let your body roll backwards until the back of your head touches the floor and your legs swing over your face. Keep your knees straight. Rock yourself forwards again until you are in the starting position again. Try this simple exercise a few times until you are able to control your movements. Remember to swing yourself back slowly so that your feet do not touch the floor behind your head. Use your hands to maintain your balance when you are perched on your seat and as your head goes down and your legs swing over. When you have gained some measure of control do the rocking exercise as a slow and continuous movement to and fro about a dozen times. You will find it very bracing and fatigue will soon disappear. Like so many other yoga asana it has the dual effect of producing energy in the body and at the same time calming the nerves. It is, therefore, beneficial both in cases of sleeplessness and of daytime fatigue. Perform this exercise a dozen times and as you swing your legs over for the last time remove your hands from behind your knees and, supporting your back with them, rise into a S-H-O-U-L-D-E-R-S-T-A-N-D. This is an excellent way of gathering momentum if you find it difficult to get into the shoulder stand from the ordinary lying position. When you can perform the rocking exercise slowly and with absolute control, try then to match your breathing so that it is in rhythm with the to and fro movements of the exercise. All yoga exercises should be accompanied by either yoga deep breathing or rhythmic breathing. Controlled breathing and stretching at the same time is the easiest method of quickly restoring freshness and vitality to a tired body. In particular the backward bend calls into play not only the muscles of the back, torso and arms, but it also tones and refreshes the nerves and taxes the sense of balance, therefore requiring a certain amount of concentration and discipline. There are many yoga exercises which combine deep breathing with stretching and I will mention the most useful ones throughout this book. Here I choose the backward bend for its particularly beneficial effects in the case of neurasthenia or nervous exhaustion. Backward bend. Stand with your feet wide apart and lace your fingers. 
together and then turn them palms upwards. Slowly raise your arms above your head and at the same time bend backwards as far as you possibly can without overbalancing. I have demonstrated the correct movement in figure 8, page 41. Remember to let your head go back as far as you can and turn your eyes upwards so that you are looking in the direction that your head is pointing. This is more beneficial than keeping them looking downwards as it imparts a healthy exercise to the eyes. Slowly return to the starting position and repeat ad lib. There is no special warning attached to the backward bend but if you have a hernia please go very carefully warn to you. Bending backwards could do more harm than good in your case. Do be careful not to overbalance as you lean backwards. This tendency can be avoided if you do not try to bend backwards to your utmost at first. Be content to go a little farther back each day you practice and you will soon gain control in this valuable exercise. And now for another breathing exercise which will restore vitality when you find you are at your lower step. Those of you who have any difficulty in performing yoga asana but nevertheless wish to study yoga as a means of improving your general health can, with impunity, practice and perfect all yoga breathing exercises. This one, to give you new zest and vitality, is called the nerve recharging breath. All yoga breathing exercises are variations of the complete breath which I described in chapter 3, and while I shall in this book describe several of the variations, I stress that they should be done in conjunction with the various asana. In choosing the nerve recharging breath for this chapter on insomnia and neurasthenia I have borne in mind the fact that toning the nervous system and stretching the muscles and tendons is nature's own way of combating these two disorders which are so intrinsically linked together. Nerve recharging breath. Stand up straight, legs apart, hands at your sides. While inhaling deeply raise your arms forward to shoulder height with your palms upwards. Complete your inhalation. Close both your fists and, while holding your breath, pull your hands back slowly until your fists are resting against your shoulders. When the impulse to exhale appears do so and at the same time slowly unclench your hands and lower them to the starting position. Repeat this exercise two or three times and then relax for a few moments before you perform any other exercise. The nerve recharging breath strengthens the nervous system and helps to overcome nervous trembling of the hands. It is also said to be helpful to people who lack self-confidence. Yoga is nothing if not all-encompassing. Practice in turn each of the exercises I have described in this chapter and after a surprisingly short time you will experience a new feeling of relaxation and freedom from stress and when you get into bed at night you will surprise yourself by sinking into a profound and delicious sleep. Chapter 5. Constipation and Indigestion. Those who are masters of the science of yoga refer to constipation as the mother of all diseases and so many of the most important yoga asana aim at improving elimination and the digestive processes and consequently the health of the entire organism. Among these exercises the abdominal lift is considered one of the most essential not only for its physical values but also for the way it influences our spiritual development by ridding the body and therefore the mind of impurities. Not only does the constant practice of it bring relief from chronic constipation and indigestion but it also strengthens flabby abdominal muscles and so improves the figure. But before attempting the abdominal lift it is advisable for beginners to spend the first two or three days limbering up the muscles with the following contracting and relaxing movements known as UDDIYANJ. Stand with the feet about 12 inches apart, inhale slowly and deeply and exhale with a good deal of force. Without inhaling again, pull in the abdominal muscles with a strong upward movement until a hollow forms under the ribs. Hold for 2 seconds. Relax the muscles, pull in again and relax again. Repeat this 2 or 3 times in quick successive movements, still without inhaling, and then relax. Do not overdo these movements at first, and remember that the accent is on the pulling in movement rather than on the letting go. Yoga exercises must be done while the stomach, bladder, and if possible the bowels are empty. First thing in the morning or last thing at night is convenient for most people but the time of day does not matter too much so long as the stomach is empty.